Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, I want to discuss with you a series of emails that I've received from an individual regarding the PlayStation 5. This individual has sent me several very interesting pieces of information concerning Sony's upcoming console. So recently I did put out a video with the first email that the individual sent me. And I did stress that I wasn't certain how valid this information was, so take it with a huge pinch of salt. But as a quick refresher, I was told that there was a new revision of the APU for the PS5, which was, which was intending to fix backwards compatibility with the PS4. And furthermore, internally, Sony were debating how much bandwidth to give the PlayStation 5. So basically, the US and Japan were apparently playing a tug of war, and the bandwidth figure of the PS5, as of the time he emailed me, had not been decided. Although what was really interesting about this email was that this individual was not providing crazy specifications. Instead, it was more little hints here, little tips there. And I have to say that the cagey way that he was handling himself, it made me at least give him the benefit of the doubt. However, ultimately I didn't have as much faith in him as I had with several other of my really good sources. For example, the individual who told me the Ryzen 3000 series release date, or the other individual who provided me the Radeon 7 uh, renders, as well as lots of information prior to the cards even being officially announced, and so on and so on. However, since I put that video out, a series of emails continue to trickle in steadily over the past couple of weeks. Just a line or two here and there for the most part. But I decided, ultimately, I didn't want to create a video on it. Now, in the first video that I did make with this individual's information, I'll link it in the video description, I also stated that I sent several highly redacted variants of the emails to a couple of key, uh, let's say, insiders, just so that they were to know that I wasn't just making this information up, I was receiving emails. You can check all of this out, once again, in the original video. But, uh, as I said, these emails continue to trickle in, but ultimately I decided to not really mention anything further of it and just kind of wait and take, take the wait and see approach, excuse me. But something very interesting happened, and that is that a couple of things in the real world seems to have actually been tallying up with what this individual has told me. So you may recall the Bloomberg article from yesterday. It basically set the internet alight because apparently the manufacturing cost of the PlayStation 5 is 450 bucks, And Sony are fighting the increasing prices of uh, DRAM, they're fighting the increasing prices of NAND flash, and to make matters worse, of course, the cooling solution of the PS5 is said to be pretty expensive. And one thing that was also in the Bloomberg article is that the camera feature for the PlayStation 5 is said to have been removed. Now, digging through the emails that the individual sent me, one thing that was quite interesting was that he specifically said that the camera of the PlayStation 5 was not impressing developers. Now, if you tie those two things together, they are slightly different, but if you tie them together, perhaps that's one of the reasons that Sony removed the camera. Not only was it increasing the price of the PlayStation 5, but furthermore, developers just weren't happy with it, at least in this current state. And there was also another interesting thing that he said. Uh, this is an email uh, dating back, actually I think it was the second email he sent me, that Sony um, were demonstrating the PlayStation 5 to key select uh, developers in Japan, and that basically there was some type of internal presentation happening. And then lo and behold on Reddit there have been several reports of much the same thing. Now ultimately, how much faith you put in this information is totally down to you. I would once again stress to take this stuff with a heavy grain of salt. I'm not going to be telling you crazy specifications of the system. Instead, this is going to be more internal stuff, what's going on at Sony, some stuff regarding ray tracing, and other bits and bobs. I want to get all of those disclaimers out of the way, and let's just start. So let's quickly go back over the first email that he sent me. He told me that there was a new revision of the uh, APU, which fixes PlayStation 4 software. Uh, once again, that there was an internal debate at Sony of the US and Japan regarding the system specifications, and currently no one knows. I found that particularly interesting because maybe one of the reasons they're debating this is also regarding pricing. Obviously, GDDR6 memory, which is faster, equals more expensive. Uh, he then went on to say um, 
in subsequent emails that ray tracing has been in Oberon since the beginning. However, it missed the internal testing that we saw, uh, which, by the way, dated back to the mid part of last year. Last year. Now, this individual's uh, uh, English is a little sketchy, so I'm not certain if he said he they missed it or whether it just wasn't tested. Um, but either way, he claims that it is there, it just was not specifically tested or they missed the testing. Uh, they will apparently hear more about the Sony uh, ray tracing later on, and perhaps one of the ways we're going to see this is Horizon Zero Dawn on God of War. They're going to show it with current generation technology, and then they're going to try it with uh, ray tracing. And now onto some new information. He told me that one of my uh, videos that this information is a little bit outdated that I was telling you all, uh, because the new revision of Oberon is not B0 anymore, it's apparently C0, and it will be delivered, and this is an exact quote, this is the only time I'm going to directly quote the individual, because he's asked me to not quote him, he's asked me to use my own words, who said, this will be delivered before the Emperor's birthday. You can Google yourself the Emperor's birthday, and of course it is a Japanese holiday. He said, there's going to be a thousand delivered for the final kit with C0 uh, early month. Apparently, uh, there has been a demo of a new PlayStation VR controller, and it is called Aston. I'm going to uh, spell that out for you, A-S-T-O-N. Development has started from the Neo development kits from last year, and we can see additional demo from the studio from the United States as well as United, uh, Europe. They said that the tracking was not great, but the it may improve. The PlayStation 5 control, however, is called a Bond, and apparently already shipped to several third-party studios, and there's been a demo of Mud and Ice, which is over 12 months old now. The design is not final, but the virtual reality developers are not happy currently with the tracking of the camera inside the system. Now, there was also apparently a demo that was being shown with older technology, and then it was patched with up to 4K, 120 frames per second. And allegedly, these were titles which were from the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 era, essentially ported to the PS5 to show what the new system was capable of. They also said that overall, Sony left a strong impression, although there was a lot of uh, PR speak and a lot of kind of Look, we have 20 years of ray tracing experience, but they were mostly citing how ray tracing, of course, is used in films and that type of stuff. But they were basically trying to equate how realism for movies can now be inside games. I Once again, I'm stressing that that's not an exact quote, but once again, the individual has asked me not to quote them directly. Furthermore, who said that ray tracing isn't just ray tracing on or off, but instead how it's going to impact a specific experience. Though this kind of sounds like to me that they're not trying to brute force uh, ray tracing in all experiences for the PlayStation 5. And to be honest with you, I expect it the same for the Xbox Series X as well. Most likely they're going to use screen space reflections quite heavily, uh, just as they are now, but yet then use ray tracing when it's smart and uh, required to do so. So I have actually been messing around a lot with uh, ray tracing um, because I'm putting out a video pretty soon. I've been kind of experimenting with ray tracing in games like Control, Battlefield 5, and so on and so on. And I have to say that I do think the experience is remarkable. I mean, I kind of knew what ray tracing was like, but now I'm really delving into it and experimenting and just seeing what kind of subtle differences it makes us, uh, makes in the game. I think that the next generation consoles will benefit heavily, but I think it's fair to say that NVIDIA's approach with RTX is kind of brute force. But obviously with consoles, they're going to have to be a lot more selective on how they actually achieve this stuff. Um, but I do feel that ray tracing is going to be a paramount uh, experience for the console. I think it's going to be uh, incredibly important on the next generation systems. It also seems to be that ray tracing itself, according to this information, is actually baked directly onto the GPU die itself. It is not separate. It is not a separate chip on the system. Honestly, despite that rumor gaining a little bit of traction, I never really 100% bought into it. For a plethora of reasons, one, it would just increase the cost of the system, and two, it's like increasing the latency as well. Um, 
So if data had to travel, just for example, from the GPU to the separate chip, then back again, you're going to get a small latency penalty for that. And it, it, it's just additional moving parts, not literally, of course, but just additional parts in the system. So I was never 100% behind that. Uh, so do I feel that this individual's information is accurate? You know what? I'm going to leave that one down to you um, to judge ultimately. Personally, I'm leaning towards it potentially being true, uh, especially given that a couple of things regarding the PlayStation 5 camera, for example, seems to tally up with what we've seen from Bloomberg. I have tried to uh, email the individual back, but it's from a burn email address, and I can't ask him a couple of very specific questions that I'd love to. With that said, um, he's not providing any insight at the moment regarding the space PlayStation 5 specifications. So, I don't know if that means that, according to his knowledge, the PlayStation 5 is what we've seen, essentially, from the internal documents. I'm, I'm just uh, answering this because I know I'm going to get asked in the comments or on Twitter if I don't uh, tackle this. Or whether it's different, but he's not willing to tell me that because maybe it's only known to a few people and he doesn't want to get his hand slapped by Sony, which of course, would be totally understandable on his part. Ultimately, anyone who sends information to me um, is doing so at their own risk, and I'm incredibly appreciative of people who do send me information. Indeed, someone else has been sending me some info on the AMD side of the equation. I've actually got several emails for him, so I'm kind of all throwing them together. But one interesting thing he did tell me uh, is that Sony and Microsoft's what can I put, put it, um, involvement with the internal testing for the chip is very limited. And so the internal testing documents, to his knowledge anyway, it seems to be pretty accurate. And speaking to my a couple of my other sources, they said that they do believe the internal uh, documents, just from their knowledge of the way that AMD handles internal procedures, is most likely accurate. But of course, that documentation does date back uh, to the midpoint of last year. And there is a couple of other small things I'd like to tackle with the PlayStation 5. These are not related to information I've had, uh, received, excuse me, but I just want to tackle them because they keep popping up and I keep being asked about them. So I'm going to just throw them in here because I don't really want to create an entire video just discussing this, these little topics. Number one, is the PlayStation 5 a chiplet design? Most certainly not. Bits and Chips on Twitter told me that he thinks one of the consoles might be chip-led. He believed it was the Xbox, but he wasn't certain. Personally, I don't believe either console is a chiplet design, uh, judging from what I'm learning, and the PlayStation 5 very much doubt it's going to be a chiplet design. It just wouldn't make sense. Um, from what we understand, there's 40 compute units on the PlayStation 5, and at the moment, anyway, it looks like 30 six of them are active. The other figure I'm hearing is that it could be 44 with 40 active, although I'm very skeptical of that. Either way, it would be incredibly unlikely that they would get very crap yields from that as a, as a, as a monolithic die. To give you an idea, the compute unit numbers you're hearing there are identical to the PlayStation 4 Pro, and they were just fine with it on a non-chiplet design. But chiplets aren't this magical thing. One of them could be a latency problem, although it does depend how internally it's all connected. And the second is you still need to put the damn thing together. So even if you do improve your yields a little bit, then you still have to put it all together anyway, so any cost you would make from the small loss of yield is potentially made up for by the chiplet design. And it's not like Sony are going to have lots of different variants of the PlayStation 5 with small subtle changes. So ultimately, chiplets just don't make sense. I could go into that a lot deeper, but frankly, it's not worth like detailing the exact reasons for like 10 minutes. Ultimately, no, I'm very skeptical of chiplets. And the last thing I'd like to tackle is, oh my god, I've heard this so many times, uh, dual compute units for the PlayStation 5, and also the Xbox, but really for the PlayStation 5, although Xbox people are also asking me about dual compute units. It is not something that's special to the consoles. Dual compute units, you can Google this yourself. Google dual compute units or dual CU RDNA, and you will see a multitude of results. It is a feature that is essentially baked in to the uh, to the RDNA architecture for every single GPU that has Radeon, uh, sorry, RDNA, 
So any Narve based GPU has dual compute units and two of those together makes a work through processor WGP. Uh, I could go into a more technical explanation, but I'm trying to keep things relatively simple for this video. But I just wanted to clarify that don't really equate dual compute units to dual GPUs or anything like that. It is not that. It's literally just how the uh, Narve architecture works. It is literally just a bundle of two compute units together hugging one another like it's Valentine's. Anyway, hopefully... You've enjoyed the video, and hopefully this information turns out to be accurate, or at the very least it's going to be interesting if it does turn out to be accurate. But I'm going to let you all go. Thank you very much for watching the video. Take care of yourselves, and bye for now.